This is the second video for the content-based recommender system. Now let's take a look on the cosine similarity. It is revisited from the previous section. So you may need, uh, you may know the similarity matrix. We already learned the similarity matrix to compare factors. We can use cosine similarity to look at the different angle. Okay, you know that the cosine similarity is calculated based on the angle between the factors. So we have A, B, and then we want to see the angle between A and B. If we have a set of users, so U is a set of users who have rated both items A and B, then yeah, we can find the similarity by calculating the adjusted cosine similarity. For example, with the adjusted cosine similarity, we find the average, okay? we find the average of user rating, and then for every of this rating, it will be subtracted with the average of that user. We have a uh, rating and then we subtract it with that average. So you already know this adjusted cosine similarity. So those kind of cosine similarity, it can be used to recommend items. And we call this method is a simple method for the nearest neighbors. Okay, what you already learned in the previous section means that you already have the users and then you can uh, measure the similarity or you can look not only between two users but later you can see n nearest neighbors. So in this document, let's say this is a given a set of documents D already rated by the user. So the rating, the rating will be like or dislike. Let's say this one is one, 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 one means like and dislike means Q. Either explicitly via user interface or implicitly by monitoring the user behavior. So you can uh, have several ways to get this rating. And the task is to find the n nearest neighbor of a non yet seen item i in D. So I can see this one. So L is not yet seen item five, or the Alice not yet seen document five. So we will do the similarity measures like cosine similarity to capture the similarity of the two documents. So we, let's say we can look at two documents, item five and item four, uh, document five and document four, document five and document three, document five and document two, and so on. And then take yeah, these neighbors uh, to predict a rating for I. It means if I know after I calculate the similarity between the Alice and user one, between Alice and user two, between Alice and user three, between Alice and user four on the respective items. So I can look at, for example, I want to uh, choose only K, K equals to five, yeah, most similar items to I. So I will just, because there are only five items. <clears throat> so if I choose K equals to five, then it means I will choose all items. Or I can choose four of K items were liked by the current user. So like this one, four of K items, so among five items, only four of them have been liked by the current user. Then, yeah, because I know that four items has been liked, and then uh, I would like to choose the neighbor. 
okay the neighbor of alice it might be similar to user two okay so user two also like item one item two item three item four so it's similar because Alice and user 2 is similar, I can say when the user 2 like item 5, Alice will like item 5 as well. Okay. Now, we, let's see if I just look at the k equals to 3. Okay. If k equals to 3, then let's look at the user 2. User 2 like item one, item two, item three. So three items. And okay, this also liked by Alice. Then yeah, I can say Alice will like it because user two like item one. How about if I look at the user three? So if I look at user three and I use the K, yeah, K is the number of items. So I if I use k equals to 3, then k okay, item 1, item 2, item 4. So three items that were liked by user 3. Oh, Alice also liked item 1, item 2, item 4. Then okay, I can predict that Alice will like it. So the prediction will be 1 because user 3 also liked item 5. In this case, yeah. in this case, I would like to say that the user two and user three are the nearest neighbor, and n is the nearest neighbor. Okay. And n means the nearest neighbor of Alice to predict the rating of item 5 because they have the similar of taste. Okay. The similar of taste because yeah, this one is 1, yeah, this one is 1, and this one is 1, this is also 1, and this is 1, this is 1, and this is 1, this is 1. Okay. It is when the k equals to 3 and so on. So you can look at the k equals to 1, k equals to 2, k equals to 3, k equals to 4, and so on. So the variation, yeah, it can be varying the neighborhood size. So the neighborhood size means yeah, you can start from k equals to 2 or k equals to 3, k equals to 4, k equals to 5, and so on. Or you can lower or upper the similarity threshold to prevent system for recommending items the user already has seen. Usually the similarity threshold, yeah, you know, the similarity will be between zero until one. And you want to have the similarity higher than 0 0.6. Okay, so you can just mention that this is the threshold. Okay. Good to model short term interest or follow up stories. Okay, when we use the cosine similarity, it is good to model the short term interest. Or, yeah, because yesterday he liked item four. Okay, I can just uh, predict for the item five from yesterday rating. But, yeah, if we want to model the long-term preferences, uh, then you need to consider other things. This kind of method, the N, N method, it is good for the short term, and we can combine it. Combination. We can combine with method to model the long-term preferences. So you can look at the similarity of this uh, users and then after you know the similarity of these users you want to look at the item okay how many items you want to select the k 
and then yeah, you can predict the uh, Alice in item file. There is another way to look at the recommended items. The retrieval quality depends on the individual capability to formulate queries with the right keyword. What does it mean? Uh, yeah, if you uh, have a keyword, sometimes the keywords, yeah, yes, you know that there's no, not important keywords, okay, or less important keywords. Yeah, we need to check the right keyword, how we can check it. So we can use some methods, okay, there is a method, we call it the query base retrieval with the Rockio method. Yeah, the Rockio method, it is, they call it the smart system. Uh, the smart system, it is not the smart, like the smart with brain, like not that one, but they have uh, another word for this one. This is for the Rockio method. Users are allowed to rate, which is relevant or irrelevant, retrieve document, yeah. And then the system then learns a prototype of the relevant or irrelevant documents. And then we can query to extend the additional term or weights of the relevant documents. Maybe let's look at the examples. Okay. When we use the Rockio detail, we will split the documents into D plus and D minus. D plus means document that the user has liked. It. D minus is the document that the users dislike. So we can calculate the prototype factor of these categories. For example, you know, in the clustering, when we have a group of data, or let's say this is a group of document, this is the D plus. So this is a group document that has been liked. Then we can calculate the centroid. We have the D minus. The D minus. It means the document that has been disliked. So a collection of the disliked document, we can also calculate the centroid. We can modify this query. So we have the query QI, and we can modify to QI plus one. What does it mean? The QI plus one, it is equal to the alpha multiplied by the query i, or this is the current query, plus the beta multiplied by 1 divided by the number of documents that has been liked. And we do the summation of any possible keywords in the document minus by the gamma multiply by the one divided by dislike document. So this is the number of document that has been disliked. Multiply by the summation of the keyword that has been written in that document. So we have the alpha, beta, gamma. It is used to fine tune the feedback. So alpha is the weight for the original query. Beta is the width for positive feedback, and the gamma is the width for the negative feedback. In, in the result of this work, okay, it mentioned that on often, okay, often only positive feedback is used because it's more valuable than negative feedback. So even though you can distinguish between like and dislike, but at the end, you know, only positive feedback will be used. So we want to recommend. Of course, you want to recommend the positive one. Do you want to recommend the negative? You do not want. Okay, so that's why uh, often, uh, because this is often, uh, people would like to use only the positive feedback. 
So in the rock U, yeah, this is the formula. It means that when you have a query, yeah, when you have a query, let's say this is a query zero, and this query zero, yeah, we have a collection of documents. So let's say this is the non-relevant document. It is in the form of this diamond sign, this diamond symbol. And the circle is the document that is relevant. Okay. And I have the query and I have a kind of numbers. So the query can be improved by looking at some of the important keywords on those documents. So I can look at the doc the keywords in the document that has been liked, and I can look at the document that has been disliked. So we, we call this is the relevant feedback. Yeah. After feedback, the original query is moved toward the cluster of the relevant documents. So for example, like this, uh, I have a vocabulary. You know, the vocabulary, or we call this is the term. Yeah. We have the term recommend, intelligent, learning, school, and feel. Okay. Now, yeah, this is the keyword. Keyword one, keyword two, keyword three, keyword four, keyword five. In the original query, yeah, so the Q0, we give a weight. Okay, so one means the keyword one is important. Zero means the keyword two is not important. One, okay, the keyword learning is important. Zero is not important. Zero is not important. School is not important. And fail is not important. Then you can have this kind of uh, factor. Okay, so we will multiply. 1 multiply by recommend, 1 multiply by learning. So let's assume that it is a kind of binary. Okay. So using the binary means if recommend exists, it is 1. If it is not exists, then we can just put it 0. So because the weight the width is one and then because recommend axis okay so of course it will be one multiplied by one but if the width is zero even though intelligent available it will be zero this width is zero this width is zero so if school is available if fail is available any number multiplied by zero will be zero So I would like to know what is the relevant document. For the relevant document, I put another width. It is two, two, one, zero, zero. It means that for the word recommend, I give the weight two. For the word intelligent, the weight is two. The word learning, the weight is one. For the school, the weight is zero and fill. The word the weight is zero. So I can just make a new uh, factor. Yeah. Two multiply by recommend. So I recommend exists, then two multiply one is one. Two. Two multiply by one is two. One multiply by one is one. Okay. And we have the non-relevant document. Let's say this is the weight for non-relevant document. Maybe uh, in the document it also contain oh it's also contain recommend okay because it has a very huge width two and then zero okay no intelligent keyword one learning okay this is uh width so what one is the width for the learning and there is no width for school and three okay so if it is non relevant. The word field is high is having a high weight. Okay. 
then two multiplied by recommend, one multiplied by learning, and three multiplied by fail. Now, usually in the ROQ example, we have we set this kind of uh, parameter. Okay, alpha. Let's say that alpha equals to one, beta equals to one, and gamma equals to zero point five. Then I would like to have a new weight. What is the new weight? Q0 okay, is the original weight. So I would like to have the Q1. This is the new weight by looking at the existing data. Okay. So let's see. Alpha. What is alpha? Okay, the parameter is 1. Multiply by QI. QI is the Q0. So it means we will do the multiplication. 1 multiplied by the weight of query 0. So 1 multiplied by 1 is 1. 1 multiplied by 0, 0. 1 multiplied by 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay. And then we have the beta. Beta is 1. 1 multiplied by the dr. Okay, so dr, yeah. we can simplify this one as the dr. Okay. So this is the, the relevant documents that we have. So yeah, after we do this calculation, okay, so we have the 1 multiplied by the dr, the relevant document. 2 multiplied by 2, uh, 1 multiplied by 2, 1 multiplied by 2, 1 multiplied by 1, 1 multiplied by 0, 1 multiplied by 0. Okay. And then we have the gamma. Gamma is the 0 0.5 multiplied by the DN, the non-relevant document. So we have 2, 0, 1, 0, 3. Okay. Now, after we have this one, you can measure the numbers. So 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, plus 2, 2, 1, 0, 0, plus 1, 0, 0 0.5, because this is the width of 0 0.5, 0, 1.5. And afterward, you will have like this keyword. Sorry, you will have this width. Okay. Now, if you look at this one, There's a negative. Okay. There's a negative. The intention for this kind of query, we want to improve the query. The improvement of the query, we will exclude the negative. Okay. Because if we have the negative, then it will be uh yeah, the number will be maybe it will be higher for the negative keyword like this tree. Then we can just consider the positive one. Yeah, usually, oftenly, they consider only the positive one, which is to multiply by the keyword. Okay, recommender axis. Then yeah, we have two. And then what about the intelligent? Okay, the intelligent is also available. Yeah, because they have two for this one. And then 1.5. Okay. Okay, 1.5, it is for the learning, okay. because this one is 1, oh, maybe this is something wrong, oh, yeah, this one is 1 multiplied by 1 minus by 0 0.5 multiplied by 1, so it means G 1 minus 0 0.5. Oh, this one is we have one plus one, which is two, two minus zero point five. Then it is one point five. So one point five for the learning. But this one yeah, is minus one point five. Then we will exclude this one. We will include only two recommender, two intelligent, when one point five learning. I think I need to put this zero. Uh, we 
we will ex we will need to exclude this zero. Sorry. Then this one will be like this one. And the final will be two comma two comma one point five comma zero comma zero because the original query we still have the zero and zero and yeah we will not consider the minus for the future as we learn this one yeah often only positive feedback is used so the negative can be discarded or the negative can be excluded The practical challenges of the Rockios method, certain number of item readings needed to build reasonable user model. So yeah, if we the the item ratings is not reasonable, yeah, it's difficult to capture. Yeah. For example, can be automated by trying to capture user rating implicitly. For example, you can click, uh, you can capture. Click on the documents. How many times the user click on the particular document? Okay. So it can also be used for the OQ method. And the other thing in the Rockio methods, we have the pseudo relevance feedback. It assumes that the first end document matches the query best. So the set of D minus or dislike document is not used until explicit negative feedback exists. Yeah. So if uh, yeah, sometimes we can we, we can use this one, the pseudo relevant feedback, uh, assume that the first end document matches the query best. It means like this, when you have the Q0, and then you go to Q1, and then you go to Q2, yeah, maybe this first are the best one. But after this one, it may not represent well. So that's why we have the pseudo relevant, pseudo relevant feedback. It means the feedback during the finding of the query. Okay. So this might be available after you do some kind of iterations. User interaction required during retrieval phase. The interactive query refinement opens new opportunity for gathering information and it helps user to learn which vocabulary should be used to receive the information he needs. Yeah, if you would like to use the user interaction, then you need to have more data. Okay, uh, like you know, when the user give more query, then the factor will be higher. Or when the user want to have less query, then it will be lesser, and so on. There is another uh, way to do the content-based recommender system. We can use the probabilistic method. With the probabilistic method, uh, there are several probably there are two kind of probabilistic method. The first, we can use the Boolean features. Do you know Boolean? Okay, yeah, this a uh, zero and one. Okay. So recommendation as a classical text classic classification problem. The classical means yeah, whether it is good. Or bad, or uh, it is for the long history of using probabilistic methods. The simple approach we can have two classes. It is a hot topic or cold topic. It is a trend or it is not trend. Yeah, so we have only two. We can make a simple do boolean document representation, and then we can calculate the probability that. A document is hot or cold based on the bias theorem. Okay, let's look at this example. In the document one, okay, the data, the recommender, the word recommender is available. Access. The word intelligent 
axis. Mm -hmm. So it means the recommender axis because it is one. The intelligent axis because it is one. Learning axis because it is one. Okay. So this is the word in the document. Okay, the word intelligent in the document. This is the word learning in the document. But there is no word school. Does not exist. That's why it is zero. I have the label. So the label means whether this document is hot or cold. So if it is hot, then I can put one. If it is cold, it is zero. Maybe this refer also the trend. So the document is a trend document. Yes. If it is not a trend document, then it is zero. Now I would like to look at the probabilistic. I want to know the probability of x given the label one. So I'm going to check for every of the uh, label, okay? When the label is one, the label is one, okay? When the label is one, okay? And then I want to look at for every possible of the column, okay? Now, when the label is one, let's look at the recommender one equals to one. Okay. When the label is one, we have three. One, two, three. So I would like to know what about the document ID six, whether it is one or zero. What is the probability uh, when I want to check if it is one? Okay, what is the probability? Then, because I would like to check only uh, the label equals two one. So, the word recommender one in the label one. Okay, the recommender is one in the label one. The recommender is one in the label one the recommender is also one then i can have three documents contain the three words okay so it means all documents contain recommender now let's check the second one the label one okay i have three again and how many of the document contain intelligent? So we have one, two. Okay, this is not available. Then two of documents contain intelligence among the three documents. What about learning? So for the learning, why it is zero? Because I would like to know from this one. Okay. So the document ID six, the recommender is one. The document six, the in the word intelligent is one. But the document ID, the keyword learning is zero. It means not available. So I would like to know the probability that learning equals to zero given label one. So label one, label one, label one, and zero, we have only one. So one among three documents. The last one, I know that the school is zero. Okay, so school is zero, then I would like to know the probability when the school is zero given the label one. So we have one and two. So two documents, 
have keyword school uh, have no keyword school among the three documents and if you look at the result so we will multiply this will be multiply with this multiply with this multiply with this our so, uh, numbers is 0 0.149 is it high or low yeah based on this information the probability is low so i'm i have no confidence that this document will be one okay i have less confidence okay, because of the low probability okay there's another way to do the probabilistic method with the term counts the term counts means we want to Calculate how many of the keywords appear. The simple approach it means we will calculate the probability of a term appearing in the document with a particular class. So let's say I, uh, you know, the conditional probability of a term VI. So the term VI means the keyword you know, appear in the document of class. C. So in the class C, we already know if it is class 1, the document is hot or trend. If the class is 0, then the document is not hot or it is cold or it is not a trend. So we can estimate the relative frequency of the keyword VI in all documents using this probability. So PVI or the keyword VI, given that the class is C, then we will count the terms VI given in the class C and divided by the all terms in document C. So count terms VI docs returns the number of appearance of term VI in the documents labeled with C and all terms document C returns the number of all terms in this document. There is another things that we need to learn with this to prevent zeros. With only this one, as you know, the, the factors can be sparse. What is sparse? Okay, sparse means there will be many zeros so if there are so many zeros then yeah it will be zero so in order to prevent a lot of zeros some researchers they propose laplace so laplace means at one smoothing to prevent zeros so for example this one in the probabilities we have the p hat we put the plus one. Okay, so the count terms we put the plus one and divided by the all terms doc C or the all terms in the documents class C plus the V, uh, the count of V. The count of V is the number of different terms appearing in all documents. We call it the vocabulary. Maybe let's look at the example. Okay. Uh, this is the probabilistic method with term counts. I have the document ID 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is the words, and this is the label. So in the document 1, we have recommender, intelligent, recommender. So it means we have two recommender and one intelligent. The label is one. In the document two, I have recommender, recommender, and learning. So the label is one. In the document ID three, I have recommender and school. The label is one. And the document ID four, we have teacher, homework, and recommender, and the label is zero. Now, in the document five, we have recommender, 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 teacher, and homework. 
So what is the level? What is the uh, probability label equals to one? Or what is the probability when label equals to zero? Now, we need to calculate one by one first. The total length of the document classified as one is eight. Oh, how can we get eight? Okay. So we will calculate all the keywords. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so the total length of document classify as one. And the length of document four, which is classified as zero, is three. Because we have one, two, and three. The size of the vocabulary, what does it mean? In this case, the vocabulary is the unique okay unique keywords how many of the unique keywords do we have we have recommender intelligent learning and then school we have teacher and homework so we have six okay Um, we will calculate the probability okay, because we already learned. Uh, yeah, at, at this moment, we assume that all vocabulary are available. Okay, yeah, it is good because yeah, we have recommender and then we have the intelligent learning and. Uh, yeah, so the, the keyword like the intelligent, maybe we can you can look at later. Uh, some of them might not be working well, okay, if you measure it. But now, what we want to look at is the document file. In the document file, how many of keywords we have recommender, we have teacher. And we have homework. So we will just measure the word recommender, homework, and teacher given the label equals to one. And we want to measure the probability of recommender, homework, and teacher given the label equals to zero. Okay. Now you will see this one. Eight. Okay, what is eight? So this is the all terms in the uh, document when the class label equals to one. Okay, and plus the size of the vocabulary, which is six. So the denominator is eight plus six. How about this one? Yeah, we have the Five. How we can get the five? We have one, two, three, four, five. So five term counts available when the label equals to one. What about the plus one? The plus one is the result from the Laplace. Okay. It is to prevent zero. We are lucky because the recommender still have the word. Okay. Now, let's go to the second one. Homework. What is homework? When the class label is one, you can see that there is no word homework. Then it is zero. So zero divided by any numbers, it will be zero. So we will do the Laplace by adding one in order to avoid zero. So we have some 
value. And we call this is the using the Laplace. Usually this will be very, very low. So by adding one, the result will be also still very low. Then no problem. Okay. It means the probability, if it is closer to zero, then it is not meaningful. Again, we will have teacher. What is teacher? Yeah, teacher is available here. Homework is available here. But there is no word teacher and homework when the label equals to one. Of course, you will do again like this one, zero plus one and divided by eight plus six. Now, we move to the label equals to zero. When labels equals to zero, let's see the recommender. Okay, and label to zero, then recommender we have one. Okay, one plus one divided by three. What is three? Three means we have one, two, three. With the length of document for classify as zero is three. So three plus six. Then we have the result of the probability when the keyword is recommender given the label zero. And we have the homework and the teacher like this one. Now, we have the prior probabilities. What is prior probabilities? Prior. So given the probabilities of a document falling into class one or class zero. So we have four documents. Among four documents, three of them are in the class one. Okay. And one of them are in the class zero. So we have the prior probability of class one is three divided by four. The prior probability of class zero is one divided by four. For this probability method, yeah, the classifier will therefore calculate the posterior probability. Okay, the posterior probability means we will calculate or we will multiply. So I want to know the probability of this document will be given label one given the existing probabilities. What is the existing probabilities? So this is the existing probabilities. First, we will calculate with the prior probabilities. The prior probabilities means the number of label one document. The probability is three divided by four. And then we have one, two, three. We have three recommender. What does it mean? We have three recommender when the label equals to one. So we use this number. Okay, this number is three divided by seven. Okay. And because we have three recommender, so it will be three divided by seven multiply three multiply uh, divided by seven multiply three divided by seven because we have three recommender words we have one two three what about the teacher the teacher is one divided by 14 and what about the homework we have one divided by 14 okay to simplify this one, yeah, we just write the three divided by seven power of three. Okay, the same. So when the label is one, the probability is zero point zero 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 three. Okay. What about if we want to give the label zero? If the label zero, the prior prob the prior probability is one divided by four. Okay, this one. And then there are three words of recommender 
Okay, there are three word of recommended, and the probability is two divided by nine. Then two divided by nine, power of three, and then we have two divided by nine for the word homework, and two divided by nine, by nine with the keyword teacher. Okay, so the probability of label zero is zero point zero 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 one. So therefore, it classifies the unlabeled document as being relevant for the users. Why? Yeah, because this number shows higher than this one. So we can just say that the label yeah, is one, or this is the relevant document. Okay. Okay, I will stop. I will continue with the next video.